So in the last part, we have introduced linear least squares regression. We've written down what the loss function is and we have written down what the solution is. So in other words, how do you solve the training problem of finding parameters w for given training data? Now we want to go to validation and hyperparameter selection. So first of all, how do you validate the quality of a learned solution of the result of a training run on other data points that we have not used in the training data? That is called validation. And uh, the linear least square solution gives us, first of all, the training error. So it tells us at the point where the minimum is obtained, what is the value of the mean square error at the training points using the parameters that we have found by optimizing this error, by minimizing this error. Now, in order to test the model or to validate the model, we want to compute the out of sample error. So we compute the same error, but now we use other data points that have not been used in the training. However, we use the parameter set that is obtained from training. So at this point, we do not change w anymore. w hat is the optimum set of parameters that was obtained after training, and we keep that. So now you also see why it is important to normalize this error by dividing the sum of square differences between predictions and labels by the number of samples because the training set and the test set or validation set may have different sizes so n in and n out may be different and because we want to have an idea how much worse the generalization of w hat applied to out of sample data is we want to have the same sizes or the same scales of the error. Now also note that at this point I'm really mixing the concepts validation and test error or validation and test set. This is because at this point it does not matter to make this difference. However, in general, um, when we also want to do hyperparameter optimization and then after that test the quality of a model that was obtained after hyperparameter optimization, then we will actually need three different data sets. So the training, the validation, and the test set. And then we will have a training, a validation, and a test error. But right now we only have two sets. The training set, or the in-sample set, and corresponding error, and the other set, which we will usually call validation set in this particular lecture here, and the corresponding validation error. Okay. Now the other task we might want to do is hyperparameter selection. So hyperparameters are, for example, the number of feature functions or the type of the feature functions. And as we have already said in the introduction, they cannot be found by using the training algorithm. And a simple example of that is if you simply used um, a characteristic function that is just defined on every single data point and you assign uh, a weight wi to that function which just makes this function the right size so that it fits the label, then you have perfectly fitted your training data. You have made the training loss zero but you will always make the prediction fx equals zero for every point outside the training data. So it will be a very bad prediction. That's just an extreme example, but it shows you that only minimizing the training error cannot be used for everything. It cannot be used for hyperparameters. So we have to distinguish between parameters and hyperparameters. Okay. Now, we have to uh, distinguish between fitting and overfitting and underfitting. Hyperparameter optimization is about avoiding underfitting and overfitting and seeking a type of model 
which best fits the out of sample data, so which makes the best possible prediction. It is not about finding the best fit for the training data. That is very important. So um, consider this example here. So say the true function is the green function that has generated the data. You see the data points are scattered around the green function, so they are generated by the green function plus a random error. And we consider different functions to fit these data. A linear function, which is obviously a bad fit, it's underfitting the data. A very high, uh, high degree function, so a, a polynomial of degree 15, so it's a very complex function with many parameters on the right. And you can see the training data is fitted very well. The training error is small, but the function makes huge uh, uh, deviations outside the training data uh, with respect to the true function. So the prediction error is pretty bad in this example. And then in between we have an example of a polynomial with degree 4 and this fits quite well the training data but also has a very good out of sample error. So it will also fit other points generating from the, generated from the green curve that we haven't used for training quite well. Now let us speak more about validation. How do we validate? So how do we compute the validation error, the error of our model on the validation data set? So first of all we have to divide our data set into the training set and the validation data set. So when we begin with a certain amount of labeled data we split it into two sets and we only use one set for training and keep the other set for validation. Now we learn the parameters using the training set by using the training algorithm. For linear least squares the training algorithm is simply computing the pseudo inverse of this matrix uh, that you have uh, seen in the normal equations um, and we can do this by, by, for example, doing a singular value decomposition of the normal equations. But anyway, you have some algorithm to determine your parameters, W. And at this point, we simply apply this algorithm to the training data. We get um, um, an optimal solution, W hat. And this is the result of our training run on this training set. The resulting residual, E in, which is 1 over the number of training data multiplied uh, with the sum of squares um, between, between the predictions and the labels. That is the training error or training loss. Then the error of the learned model in the predicted data not used for the training, so the validation data, is given by taking the weights obtained from the training and just computing the same error but now on the, the, the out-of-sample data or the validation data. This is called validation error or validation loss. It gives us a metric to validate the trained model. So it validates or it tells us how well the model generalizes to new data. Now if we choose hyperparameters we do this by minimizing this validation error over the hyperparameters. So for example, in the last slide we choose different degrees of polynomials that we want to consider for training. By doing training for different degrees of polynomials, so we repeat the training for different sets of functions and for each of them we compute the validation error and then we take the model that gives us the smallest validation error. Now at this point, if you also want to know how big my error is, how, uh, that, that this best model that I've just chosen will make on a new data, then you have to ask that question for another data set that you haven't used in either the training or the validation because now we have optimized over the validation data set. Yeah, we have optimized hyperparameters over the validation set. So we cannot use the validation data set anymore 
for making a prediction of how good that model will be out of sample because we've used all the samples. So and at this point a third data set comes into play and that is then called test set. All right. So in general, when we uh, talk about hyperparameter selection and overfitting and underfitting, we have the following qualitative behavior. We have something like model complexity or effective degrees of freedom or expressiveness that a model has, a machine learning model, and that can be really any type of model. That can be a, um, a linear regression model, it can be a kernel model, it can be a neural network. Um, and we have some sort of loss or mean error, something that we want to minimize. Now the training error always decreases if we make the model more complex in the sense that we give the model more expressivity or more degrees of freedom. It will always decrease. However, the cross-validation error or the validation error will not always decrease. It will have an optimum. And this is the optimum we are interested in. This optimum will not minimize the training error. The training error is optimized for more complex models. But it aims at minimizing the prediction error. Note that this, uh, this plot or this, these curves are made for a fixed data size. Okay, when we do a split of the data into a training and a validation data set or a training validation test, uh, we can be in a situation where an unfortunate split is made. That means um, somehow there are something like rare events, so there are certain classes in a data set or certain labels that are very rare, and for some reason these rare events are only uh, in the test set or only in the training set, so we don't have a good representative sample of the entire data in both subsets. And then it is useful to shuffle the training and test data um, and do different splitting. So a, a good practice is whenever you obtain data that you want to work with, to first shuffle it. So assuming that the individual data points have no particular sequence that you need to respect, but they can be uh, used independently, you uh, first shuffle the order. And then what we can do is cross-validation. Cross-validation means we consider different splits of training and validation data. And it works like this. We take um, the data, we split it into k parts or folds. And in k fold cross validation, these are really non overlapping folds. So we just divide the data into, into k more or less equally sized parts. And you call the corresponding parts or folds xi and yi. And the complementary set, set, so the rest of the data, is called x minus i and y minus i. And then for each of these folds, we do training of, uh, so we apply the training algorithm on the training data, and the training data is always x minus i, y minus i, so it is the larger part of the data set, and then we compute the validation error on the fold number i. So that is the, the part of the data that we didn't use in this training iteration. And then we have done this k times for each fold and for each fold we get a different validation error and now we average over these validation errors. So visually here is what we are doing. We take the data set, in this case we split it into four folds. We do four times training on three-fourths of the data and testing or validation on one-fourth of the data. And then we average the validation error over these four realizations.